Let me tell you about the show's newest sponsor, Juniper Mountain Coffee. You can check them out at junipermountaintradingpost.com and check out everything that they sell. I really like what they say on their website. And guys, if you are a coffee connoisseur like me, this here American company that's not run by a bunch of wokesters might be worth checking out for you. What they say is, we roast coffee for those loyal to a lost way of life, those that never back down in the face of adversity, the ones that keep their word, treat people with respect, and still believe in the importance of hard work. We offer some of the best coffee in the world and look forward to earning a spot in your cup. And they have definitely earned a spot in my cup. Whether you like light roast, dark roast, ground already, or not ground, you just want to order it fresh. And they even have those little pod things for those of you that just make one cup at a time. I drink too much coffee for that, so I don't do that. And they also have a cold brew. But it's a great company, great story. Uh, You guys are going to dig these guys. Check them out at junipermountaintradingpost.com. Let them know the Western Huntsman sent you. This is that time of year when it's really time to turn up the heat on your scouting. We're going through summer. Season's going to be here before you know it. And I don't care if you're going after mule deer, whitetail, the mighty whoppity, whatever it is. Scouting is imperative and it makes it much easier when you use trail cameras where they are allowed. And uh, let me tell you something. I, I like trail cameras that are easy to use, functional, and have good quality pictures. That brings us to Spy Point. Spy Point trail cameras. You can check them out at spypoint.com. And it doesn't matter if you're looking to do one of the cell cams, like the Flex X or the Flex G36 or the LM2. They have some great deals on their website. Like right now, if you check them out, they've got some clearance cameras going on on the cell cams. You can also get a cell link that attaches to any regular cell camera and will uh, transmit pictures right to your phone. The other trail cameras, if you're way out in the backcountry and don't have phone service out there, the Force Pro S and the Force Pro are my go-to cameras. I absolutely love them. If you guys saw the pictures from this last bear season, they were really high-quality pictures, and they were all done with that Force Pro camera. So check it out, guys, at spypoint.com, and let them know the Western Huntsman sent ya. There exists a threat. From anti-hunting groups to politicians trying to give our land away, and we won't stand for it. Those vast western landscapes provide the space for our wildlife to thrive, and a place for hunters and anglers to fuel the fire that sparks their soul. In this show, we share our love of hunting, fishing, and conservation. Here, we provide the foundation to meet these threats through passion and the grit of the American outdoorsman. Welcome to the Western Huntsman Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Western Huntsman Podcast. This is Jim Huntsman, your host, coming at you from the Broken Time Studio and brought to you by Eastman's Hunting Journals. Welcome to the uh, the first show of 2024. I haven't recorded in like three weeks. I feel like I'm just uh, full of rust, but we're going to knock it off tonight. So um, with me tonight, I've got my old pal, Guy Duplanchier. How you doing, up, brother? brother? I'm good, man. How you been? Not too shabby. Not too Happy shabby. New Year. I'm honored that we get to drop the new year number one episode for you, man. Yeah, I didn't man. expect that. That's pretty, pretty BA. Well, I had, I had, I had another one uh, kind of lined up to, to kick off the new year and, and it got canceled. So, uh, here we are now. Now, uh, we, you're on deck. You and I've got Efren Gonzalez from Colorado Springs. Is that right? That's right. I said your name right too, right, man? Yeah, you got it. Sweet. And we have Jeffrey Duvall, also from Colorado Springs. So we've got, say what's up, man. What up? All right. We can hear everybody pretty good. And um, I appreciate you guys joining me. This is this should be a lot of fun. I uh, It's actually going to be a topic that I don't know a ton about. And I know guys had a lot of, uh, he's been involved with this for, for you know, some time or, and whatnot. And so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it. But I want to get... Uh, Everybody to just kind of chime in a, a couple of spend a couple of minutes telling us a little bit about you. Guy, let's start with you. Um, 
Do I need an introduction on this podcast? Probably, I probably not. Pissed off enough listeners to last a lifetime. <laughs> I got, I did get some hate mail uh, the last time I had you on the show, man. But I, I, I get hate that's mail awesome. with every episode, so whatever. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, if you're not, if you're not getting a little bit of hate when you're discussing some of the stuff that yep. we discussed, then we're probably not pushing buttons enough. Um, yep. And it's healthy for us, especially in our demographic, in my opinion, to have some difficult conversations and, and stuff that gets people, you know, lean into the side. It doesn't make us any less in the terms of brethren, but I think difficult, yeah. you know, air quote, difficult conversations in our demographic are absolutely necessary. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think, um, you know, it's like that quote. What, what's that quote? If If everybody in the room agrees. Yes, Somebody's sir. not telling the truth or, or whatever right. that is. And and yeah, I, I right. think that that's, that's a lot of, you know, that, that is very derivative of those conversations we were having. So uh, I've got some good spicy ones coming up on, on some of those topics too. So, um, so uh, yeah. So everybody listening guy, if you don't know who he is, if you've never listened to my show and haven't listened to Western contours, he is the host of the Western contours podcast, uh, big time Western hunter, family man, uh, just great, Dude, all around. The only complaint I have is his last name's really hard to pronounce. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. <laughs> uh, Efron, like, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Um, so I grew up hunting. I am um, currently living out here in Colorado Springs, relocated in 2020. Um, up until 2018, I was just that, just out hunting with the family and whatnot, raising my kids outdoors. And, uh, Decided to open a clothing line in the outdoor industry. Big kind of tinkering with that a little bit. Um, but yeah, man, I'm outdoorsman, same as guy, family man. Uh, I don't know if I'm as good as good of a guy as guy is, but don't let him talk working, himself down. We're working at it. <laughs> <laughs> top top notch, bro. Not guy, guy does not set a very high bar, so I mean, <laughs> nah, you, we're friends, <laughs> so basically, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, Efren, what, like, what, what do you mean you started a clothing store? What, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, more of a, clo- a clothing line. Um, you can see my logo and be- out behind me. Um, uh huh, but yeah, I just wanted, I kind of wanted, um, uh, something I can, I, I can stay more relevant i guess and keep my kids and bring other kids and other people into the industry um so i started this little clothing brand and i gave it a shot bought a bunch of cheap stuff up front put some logos on it went to a 3d tournament in phoenix and basically sold everything out and it kind of like turned the light bulb on like damn maybe i really got something here so i started messing around with a little more a little more designs better clothing better hats um and now um we are we're in shields we've been in a few smaller mom and pop shops you're talking about uh, pack them out apparel yes sir oh okay i'm familiar with that yeah oh sweet yeah. man but now you're in you're in shields and what and we've done a little like mom and pop shops things like that uh we do We've done like Cowboy Christmas in Vegas. We do all the shows. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, man, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun. Heck yeah, Heck he's yeah, downplaying it too in terms of the involvement with the family, and that was one of the things that when Ian and I first started talking three four years ago, the level of commitment that the entire family has to the outdoors, the outdoor space to pack them out apparel. I mean, really is, is really second to none in my opinion, man, when you see his kids involvement and uh felly fell, that's his wife, I Felicia, um, and her involvement in it, man, he's, he's, he's taken a, a high road of humility, um, that he shouldn't be taken in my opinion. So sweet. Well, I just, I just jumped on the website here, pack and, yeah. uh, I, 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 I'm like embarrassed. I didn't know that that was you that started that apparel line. Cause I, I, I do know about it. So sorry about that, man. That's good to hear. <laughs> I hope guy warns you that I'm not the sharpest uh, knife in the drawer. He used the coming. word hillbilly a couple times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hillbilly. Hillbilly's right. Hillbilly's not, it's not inaccurate for sure. <laughs> All right. Jeffrey Duvall, you're on deck. Do you go by, uh, do you go by Jeff or Jeffrey? Uh, either or. Okay. Yeah. Usually, usually Jeff, but usually or. Jeff. All right. Jeff yeah. Duvall. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm the hillbilly of the group. <laughs> so I've uh, 
Efren and I, we married sisters. So, um, oh, okay. Once he started packing them out, I joined forces with him and I, uh, I just promote him in any way I can. I hang out. I'm the, uh, I'm, I'm the hangout buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hype man. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, dude, man. he's the hype man. Everybody loves yeah. Jeff. Sweet. Yeah, so. You guys, are yeah. you guys going to be at the Hunt Expo? Um, uh, in Denver? Which Salt one are you Lake. talking about? Salt Lake. Salt Lake. Salt Lake. No, I think guy, guy's I'll going, right? Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, guy's going. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. We, we should go, but, you know. Yeah. We should. That's I'll what be they there. all say. That, well, guy, is, yeah. at least we'll be able to. You know, as long as I've known Guy, I've never actually met him face to face, so th- that'll be cool. Yeah, that's the one thing him. about those expos, or you know, going to you know something like Western Hunt Fest, is uh, is you get to actually shake hands. Yeah, um, right. and then you know, especially at that Hunt Fest, right? And then you go out and you get on the course and you're shooting bows and enjoying that's that so, cool, that camaraderie yeah, sh- there, shooting with people that are that you get. <laughs> like I give some of them, come, oh, you're the pack out guy. Oh, nice! And then they're like, "Well, can I can I shoot with you?" I'm like, "That's not that serious, but sure, why not?" <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well, uh, and then I guess that's a good segue into talking about what this uh, what Western Hunt Fest is. Fest. Sorry, I mis- mispronounced that. Um, give me give me like an overview of of what the idea is, and which, by the way, those of you listening can check it out at one, uh, WesternHuntFest.com. That'll be in the show notes. Uh, in fact, I'll put that pack amount apparel thing uh, website also in, into the show notes too. Um, but westernhuntfest.com. Um, I don't know much about it. So, uh, again, as Guy said, I'm a hillbilly. I live way up in the sticks and don't get out much. So, uh, it fills- <laughs> why don't you go ahead, Jeff? Take, take that and then we can branch off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, the Start Western it. Hunt Fest is. Um, it's a 3D archery competition, an elk calling contest, and a pack out challenge, basically, um, all in one competition mixed in with some education. So we have like hunting seminars, novelty ranges, vendors, and all that jazz is, is, so, is the basic review. And these are like one day things or are they like all weekend? Uh, two day. Yeah. Two day. Two day. Okay. So yep. come- two busy days. Yeah, too <laughs> long days. Yeah, it's it's too busy days, Jim. Guy, how long have you been involved with this? I mean, I've been at, I think, just about every one and then kind of went full send, Um, well, ownership-wise, end of last season. Full send, because these are my boys sometime last season. <laughs> um, <laughs> But but the event, I mean, you know, I, and I can kind of talk uh, on it, you know, from an outsider perspective. It's probably the most complete 3D. I shouldn't even say it that way. It's the most complete hunting event there is in terms of field right, and practicality and what we do in the field. So Jeff mentioned the pack out challenge, right? It, it's not. No, I'm not downing anything. It's not enough to go shoot your bow at the 3D range, right? Yeah. Um, we can go out there. We can practice a ton. Typically, we're standing at the pin, we're, you know, upright, stable, and we're shooting. Um, what happens, you know, when you're in the field, that happens, you you get that animal down, well, then you got your pack out, right? Um, that aspect of it is, is um, found itself into Western Hunt Fest because it's part of our scenario. Um, we're all elk nuts. Um, so then having the calling comp and the calling seminars, um, our, our necessity, right. Education and what we do is, is huge, um, for you and I, in terms of podcasting, that's what we hope to provide with almost every conversation that we have is some level of education. So that was kind of the path, um, with Western hunt fest is to bring all the aspects of hunting and put them at your feet and cr- yeah, cram it into a weekend. And it's a very well-timed, well-thought-out procedure. Um, you know, you go from your 3D shooting to the pack out, you have your lunch break, have a seminar with the likes of Joe Gillia, Jermaine Hodge, Tony Gilbertson, um, and others. Um, we have, you know, Kafaru is one of uh, our main sponsors in this with the pack out challenge. Um, last year, Amanda put on a pack fit um and function seminar so we're just trying to bring everything we can into a weekend and make it the most encompassing 3d event you've ever attended so i've got i've got the website pulled up here and it looks like we've got um 
Western Huntfest, New Mexico. So uh, how do you say that name? Raton? Raton, New Raton. Mexico? Raton. Raton? Yeah, so, yep. and, so that's uh, that's going to be, it's it's all the way north. It's basically the last town. It is the last town before you get into Colorado, up the I-25. Oh, gotcha. So okay. The, I've been through there then. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if you've ever, you've ever heard of the, uh, the NRA Whittington Center. I haven't. It, no. Okay. So it, it's a, I think it's like 30,000 acres, right, Jeff? Yeah. Is that right? I, I think 33,000. 30, yeah. 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 So oh, sweet. over 30, yeah. 30,000 acres. They, they give us, uh, we use a very small portion of that, um, to run our, our event. But, um, I mean, the facility itself you can do everything from shoot air rifles to uh, what is it what was that that uh that white rhino or that white uh, buffalo 1300 yards or something 1300 yards so if you want to do long range you can do long range you can do ski you can do air air rifles they've got a uh, tactical pistol ranges three guys. all kinds of good stuff i think yeah, i but, think whittington goes out to two miles yeah, i think it does long range correctly. yeah yeah yeah, for the long range, Whittington is big enough to go two miles. They offer hunts on the facility. It's oh, a, yeah. I, I can't believe you've never heard of it, Jim. I mean, it is freaking amazing, dude. Yeah. You yeah, know, I is. probably have. I just, it's, uh, again, A, I, I've been overwhelmed lately, man, This uh, the, with, with the holidays <laughs> and family and, and everything else. Been into, like, I'm just, I feel like I'm out of it, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, uh, and so that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've got to lose like 10 pounds after that too, by the way. Uh, that was, uh, <laughs> Guilty. Uh, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got April 13th and April 14th for that one. And then yep. you go from there to Saturday, May 4th uh, and May 5th to the WHF Western slope in Palisade, Colorado. I'm going to let yep. guy cover that one. Cause he's been out there quite a few times now. Yeah. So that one's that cameo. That's a, you know, a, a uh, kind of a state run through CPW um, facility, but in lines with the Whittington Center um, in terms of, you know, encompassing all your shooting sports, some phenomenal uh, archery ranges on it. And the terrain is is second to none. It's probably one of our more open venues, um, you know, kind of that low country, deserty juniper pines, um, but brutal, brutal terrain. Some of the steepest shots we'll probably see all season. And then when we talk out our, our pack out um, event and then the sprint challenge, um, that one, that one, we're looking to, we're looking to break you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like walking on the moon at, you know, 40 to 60% grade for most of that thing. So that's going to be a, a pretty fun one. And that one really caters to like Western Colorado, um, you know, anything west of the Continental Divide and then that eastern Utah um, is kind of that that venue is going to encompass all those folks there. So Utah, jump on across the border and join us at Cameo on May 4th and 5th. And I got a question for you. So how, when you say a pack out challenge, what tell me a little bit about how that works. What do you you have something you're replicating elk quarters or something with and, and packing them out? And and how far well, that's and your- how far? So the, the, the distance varies, um, but, you know, because of time, because of um, the amount of folks attending the event, generally speaking, um, the course loop is going to be where somewhere between, you know, half mile, three quarters of a mile simulated elk quarters. So you got your two rears, your two front shoulders, loose meat, sandbags, um, and then you got to carry uh, the head and the antlers. Um, and that's, that's on the men's side of things. We can get into the women's in a second here. And then for one of your rounds, you have to carry your bow with you. Right. Um, again, trying to simulate real world scenarios in the field. Um, so that bow has to go one trip with you, generally your first trip and it's a timed event, uh, best time wins. We don't have, uh, we're not really into second place trophies. Um, you know, the way the point system is set up, there is a three tier podium at the events, uh, but there's one ultimate predator at the end of the entire season. Uh, and we'll bring, you know, somewhere between 15 and 20 folks together at our last event in Bailey, and then they'll compete in the same, um, the same realm, um, in terms of that pack out and some shooting and whatnot to take the belt home, so to speak. Okay. I got questions about that. Yep. So you got your, you've got your 
Um, okay, we're tall in New Mexico. May 4th is in Palisade, Colorado. Then you, you go to Reno, Nevada on May 25th and 26th. Uh, and then we go to the Air Force Academy in where is that? Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. Oh, that's in Colorado Springs. Okay. Yes, that's sir. on June 1 and June 2. And then the champion, the, like the Mac Daddy event is what you're seeing, yeah. is on July 27th uh, in Bailey, Colorado. And that's where like all the all the winners of the, the first four end up going to that one. And it's like kind of like the Super Bowl of uh, Western Hunt Fest. Is that is that how you're describing it? It's the Super Bowl of 3D archery events, period. Because there's yeah. nothing else doing what we're doing. So it is the gotcha. Super Bowl 3D archery. And <laughs> when you when you talk about uh oh you, you, and then you have a women's event as well, is that what you said? Yeah. So the the women's pack out challenge is, is a simulated mule deer, right? So again, you know, all four quarters, loose meat bag, head, bow, and same deal, same distance, going for time. And it'll be tiered the same way in terms of podium and then the invites at the Bailey event. I'm going to come down and do that one. You know how I, I, I'll just identify <laughs> and I'll win hey. that shit, man. Don't get me going, Jim. <laughs> Whatever you identify <laughs> as. <laughs> I'm a woman. I'm going to pack it out. No, that's, uh, that's cool, man. I, I like, I like this concept. Like what, give me, if you guys can kind of describe what, uh, obviously guy i think you you talked about how you wanted people to get some education out of it and some networking and and whatnot like is that is that the driving factor behind doing doing something like this because i like this idea but i noticed how you don't come up to idaho or montana or wyoming where all the real men hunt um yeah and so i'm just i'm just yeah. curious like what uh tell me a little bit about some of the motivations to do this Go yeah ahead. so oh, yeah, so our motivation, honestly, we we were going to these 3D events. We loved them. They were a lot of fun. But we we are so competitive that at these 3D events, we were competing with each other. We were talking smack. We were having fun. And we really, really wanted to see more to these events. So we tossed it around, and we came up with a plan for, like, the ultimate hunting event. Because essentially, that was what was in my mind. Mm -hmm. and same with Efren. like we we just wanted to make the ultimate hunting event selfishly so that we could participate in it we are yet to participate but, <laughs> but we have created exactly what we wanted you know we we saw a vision we wanted there to be an education aspect to it we wanted there to be a competition aspect with trophies at that and then we just wanted it to be fun too so um so and then another big focus was we have we both have a lot of kids so we also wanted it to be family friendly and we wanted to have an event that's gonna cater to the hardcore hunter the beginner and the family you know just yeah, yeah. everything all in one. i like that i like that concept i'm I, I i'm curious like when you talk about let me scroll back down on the website the championship in in bailey um is that like is that the champions of one particular thing, like, okay, all the winners of the pack out challenge, the 3d challenge separately, or is it like who scored? Like somebody took the most points when you combined all the events into the end of the, the event. Does that make yes. sense? I, 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 I kind of fumbled yep. that. <laughs> no, that's exactly right. So we're going to, we're going to tally up points. Um, we, so we're going to give points for our 3d competition. We're going to give points for our elk calling competition, the pack out challenge, and the sprint challenge. And then we're going to develop a leaderboard. And we're going to select the top, let's say, 20 from that leaderboard. And we're going to invite them to Bailey and have them hash it out for the ultimate champion. <laughs> I dig it, man. I, I love this concept, actually. I'd, I'd get my butt kicked on the pack out challenge, though. I, I, it's good know, to bro. do that. Actually, be, I think there's. You guys know how many hunters go into the field that have exactly. never felt the dead weight of a rear elk quarter. Like it uh -huh. is. It is like in. And I don't care how many times you do it. When you put a rear quarter on your pack, and you put that sucker on your back and start moving, I don't care. I don't care how much experience you have or how little experience you have. It's a freaking shocker. It's like damn, oh, yeah. dude. <laughs> I mean, like, that, I never that really I've... is 
that is the point of the pack out challenge. I mean, the competition is one thing, but the education piece in terms of where you're at physically, are you really prepared to, to get all your meat out without spoiling it? Right. And how does your equipment function before you get to the woods? Right. That's so it a, falls that's perfectly a key into our educational piece. Yeah, yeah. I, I love I love the equipment operational. My uh, my cousin Andrew and I, we found out the hard way. Uh, we did not, I packed out an elk on this particular pack I had, but I did it differently. And there's like two ways to do it on, on this IA4. And, uh, I, I just kind of, I was helping some guys the first time and I did take a rear quarter, but I attached it to the outside part of it. Well, this time I was taking the back, you know, where you sandwich the the quarter in between the pack and the pack for right in the pannier. And, and I screwed it up, dude. Like this thing was going sideways, left and right. And we were going up this mountain and I'm just like, I had to keep, keep taking it off and I could not get that sucker tightened down. And, and, and so it's like, it's like, man, if I, I just, I, I can't emphasize enough. Like people don't, maybe they underestimate how much of a bitch that thing is like, like it just is. Right. And there's no other way to put it, you know? And so well, this, it, that's, I mean, really component. watching it watching it it goes to show how unfamiliar and you know me jim i'm a gear freaking uh, yeah. ridiculous nut right i tell everybody my, my gear if i have a question about gear i just call guy it 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 shows you your shortcomings there and how difficult that, that pack out can be and you're talking a three quarter mile loop generally speaking max and it is brutal to watch folks come around with their pack with the fit and function of their pack with that simulated quarter on it. And you know that that's the reason that they're failing. I mean, it was, that's what spawned the, the pack fit seminar was so people understand how to use the thousand dollar pack that you think that they would be in the garage messing with rucking with preseason, yeah. but, but people take it for granted that it's going to be this easy process. And then they go get brutalized. You know, and the worst thing you could do is early September, 75, 80 degrees, no, you know, no real good shade in some areas you're packing out and get killed on that. And then you, mm -hmm. you know, you're wasting meat, right? I mean, it's, it's irresponsible at a, as, as hunters to be in that position. Yeah. Um, but the pack out challenge and, and the seminars, man, it really brings it to light. So uh, let me, I, I want to kind of walk through this. We, we, you've got two days. Okay. You're doing a pack out challenge, which, uh, by the way, is this like a, is there, is there an option to be like a team event? Like if, there is. if, if me and guy showed up, I can, I can have guy be my pack mule and I'll do the shooting <laughs> or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I don't know. it's either, it's either solo and you still uh -huh. have to, whether you do it solo or team, you still have to do the same amount. Um, and you still got to run the same course. Okay. So, uh, but there is, but there is the option for teams, um, and teams meaning two, not, Ten, not four. Your entire camp, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the entire people. elk bros shows up, and there's like ten of them. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Three quarters of a mile getting an elk out is nothing for those guys. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. We do have we do have a teams, um, and solo. So it, it's we've had husband and wives do it. We've had hunting partners do it. Um, we've got brothers that do it. Hmm. So it, it's it's fun. Okay, so uh, getting back to what I was kind of asking there, um, you've got you, you've got. I, I just want to make sure I'm getting all the all the things here because I'm I'm I've got this is going to lead to other questions. Uh, you've got your pack out competition. You've got your elk calling competition. Uh, then there's a 3D shoot. How big is this uh, 3D 3D course you guys set up? Is it you guys that set the course up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's twenty targets per per course. We have two courses, so we run one. Um, so we do shotgun starts. So we run them in the morning. So we run the three D competition on day one, and then everybody comes back, and then we start our other events. And then on day two, same thing. First thing in the morning, we go run our second course. And with the three D shoot, we add like hunt specific tasks. Mm -hmm. so it's not just a typical 3d shoot we we ask them to do a lot of things on top set up of a tent just shooting their start boat. a fire <laughs> <laughs> not that no one would win if we said start and come yeah. on <laughs> i'd i'd kick yeah. everybody's ass at fire starting competitions 
<laughs> you know, yeah, there you go, man. We might have to throw mode. the Huntsman fire starter propane. in next year, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, it would be interesting on just a totally side note. It'd be interesting for people starting fires that uh, live in places like New Mexico and Arizona and even Colorado and Utah, where it's super dry competing against folks in like North Idaho and Montana, where it's really wet. And yeah. uh, I'm getting down a rabbit trail here, but I'd, I've always wanted to have that competition because I, I lived in Utah for many, many years, and it's way easier to start a fire there than it is in Montana and Idaho. Uh, That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the moisture, the moisture is way different. So um, did I miss one? Uh, we had we had to pack out the, the elk calling championship and then the um, 3D archery shoot. Is there anything else competitively? Uh, we have the sprint challenge. We have a sprint challenge too. And this is kind of our tiebreaker, so to speak. Right. So we threw this in there to, to give folks one, another shot at points, right? There's people that excel at the pack out. Um, then there's people that excel at the shooting. So you got your physicality and then you got your technical. So we threw the pack out challenge in, or excuse me, the, the sprint challenge in to kind of level that playing field um, and, and to okay. kick arse on both sides of those of those high notes so what the sprint challenge is is basically 100 yards you know marker to marker with a, uh, a target you know set at the 50 yard mark um and it's a 50 yard shot in a nutshell um you have to sprint sh shoot drag a sandbag come back shoot sprint sprint shoot so you get three shots Dang. it's it, your sprint and your drag is timed so say you did everything in three minutes the way that it works um, is your 10 and 12 ring are subtractions from your overall time. Your 8, 5, and 0 are additions to your overall time. So if you shoot really bad with the physicality, then you can be looking at a 3, 10, 3, 15. Um, if you shoot really good and perform really good in terms of time, so you did it in three minutes and you shot a 10 and a 12, then you can be looking at a 245. So a sub three minute time, and then we'll tier that. And then that's how we'll kind of level the playing field between the, the two events there. Man, you guys have this really well thought out. So this is like, you, you guys have, <laughs> I mean, this is like complicated, almost like golf or something. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Can you, can somebody just come to the fest? Uh, and like shoot the RD or the 3D range without being, you know, as, as for the competition, they can. Yeah, absolutely. Is, is there like a fee for that or? Yeah, so we welcome everybody. Um, if, whether you want to do just the pack out or just the 3D, or you want to come for the seminars, whatever it is, to you still gonna. So that here's the deal: you still got to pay the 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 admission to put your ticket, right? Mm -hmm. So you might as well take advantage of the entire the entire program um but yes if, if somebody does want to come shoot they they pay for it online uh they come out they can shoot um we've even had some people that they don't they don't want to be scored they don't want to be competitive but they want to come out and try the course so yeah they'll come that's, in that's like what i'm thinking that'd be fun yeah exactly yeah they just want to have fun they, they'll come out they'll shoot with everyone listen to the hecklers have a good time and just not turn their scorecard in because they don't care about the score. They just wanted to have a good time. So yeah, I like absolutely. I like the photo gallery on the website. That's that's pretty cool. How many years have you guys been doing this? This is uh, we're going year into year three. three. Three year three. Yeah. And and the the big question is is why why are there no events up here in like Montana or North Idaho or or even Wyoming? Oh, logistically yeah lo logistically i mean it was it's just a decision in terms of growth what the three of us could handle uh, um and and honestly some of it being a new event is someone giving us the opportunity and doesn't expect fifty thousand dollars <laughs> you know yeah. um i think next year i would i would almost guarantee with 99 percent certainty that next year we will be in idaho um and add it to uh our venue list for next year what what do you mean? Like, are you talking about like a venue to to have an event like this? Um, shoot, I'll do it. You, you can do it on my place for nineteen ninety nine and forty cents. <laughs> we'll do it. No, I'm kidding. We'll send you the money right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you that price. Does, does that include the uh, VRBO there, buddy? Man, yeah, for you, brother. I mean, shit, I got you can stay in the old Broken Time studio. Remember that little there we go? Frame? That'd be an honor, huh? man. The OG yeah. studio. 
Uh, you don't want to go in there right now. There's a mouse I can't get. He, he's not falling from my trap, and he's crapping all over my hunting gear, man. Um, Dang, you've been dealing with that mouse for a minute, dude. I heard it on one of your episodes talking about that mouse. Seemed like two months ago. Yeah, it probably was, man. He won't like every other mouse here. Well, I can get the pack rats. I can get the mice. I can get. I've got all these cats running around. But this one particular mouse that's in that old it's it's a it's called a Keystone <laughs> Zeppelin trailer. It's this little 21 foot trailer. It's what I've been recording podcasts when we lived on the old property for a couple of years and shit, man, he will not fall for this trap that the rest of them do. So <laughs> anyway, that's a uh, side note, but, uh, so, so that's, is, is that kind of the holdup finding some kind of venue to hold this kind of event at and, and they're, they kind of get pricey or, or whatever. Well, it's, I mean, you know, the, the model that we're working under is, uh, money out money in no credit we want to build this thing where it's you know where we can enjoy it right and as soon as you start yeah. trying to dump all this finance and interest and everything into it do we want it to really feel like work not really is it work hell yes it is it keeps us all busy um but you know that's the model that was set out for it and that's what we aim to keep so it's just a matter of growing it and pacing that growth um you know by all means if you know we can get uh, more sponsors in and, and get, you know, these venues packed with folks, then yeah, we're going to grow and we'll look at that growth and, you know, we'll keep stepping big bounds. But if you look at, you know, the first couple of years, um, I think when we did the numbers, E, correct me if I'm wrong, we grew 200% and the goal is to, you right. know, double that again this year, um, which is huge. Um, and it took of an undertaking, man. I mean, it's a two a day event for our participants and our sponsors, but for us, each event is, you know, year long, <laughs> year long in terms of preparation. I mean, you know, our, our meetings and, and talks to each other are almost shit. I think at this point they're daily, um, you know, and we really want this to be something that when people come, it's memorable. They enjoy the hell out of it and they want to come back and scaling our or lend to that rip. We don't want anybody walking away going that event was whack. We want yeah. everybody to come and say, I got something out of it. Dude, that's, the, that's the thing, too, is uh, what walking away with. Actually, I just got this. I'm going to read you something real quick. Let me see. I got a, a message from somebody the other day asking if we were going to bring it to uh, Raton again. And he said, he said, "What y'all do? What y'all are doing is badass. Got me ready for my elk hunt and how to be better prepared. I didn't shoot an elk, but I was damn sure prepared." Silencer Central, folks. If you want to learn something new right alongside me, check it out at silencercentral.com. I've never put a suppressor on any of my weapons, but I'm gonna start now, and I'm using Silencer Central to help get me started because they walk you through the whole process. To include, you can ship the rifle to them. They'll thread it, they'll put it on, and they will ship it back, and you can make payments on the whole thing while you wait for all the licensing to get approved, which they take care of for you. It's a great process, and it's a great company, American manufacturer, right there in South Dakota, and we are really excited to be partnering with them. So check it out at silencercentral.com, or give them a call at 888-781-8778, and let them know that you heard it on the Western Huntsman. Hoffman Boots is my go-to boot. I love the Explorers in the 8-inch, and they've got the Vibram sole, totally waterproof, no break-in period. They just glue your feet to the mountain. You can't ask for more out of a boot, and you don't have to break the bank to get a pair. So check it out at hoffmanboots.com. Again, another American company. A uh, local North Idaho friend of mine who runs this company decided to make some great hunting boots for all people that are serious about getting into the backcountry to chase elk and deer and bear and everything else out there. So check it out at hoppinboots.com. Use promo code all caps lock Huntsman 10 at checkout to save you 10%. So, so that's okay. what you want people walking away with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For I mean, sure. we, we can, E, why don't you, I mean, go further right look at the numbers from from year one to last year participants that went from hunt fest into the field that actually said hey you guys get a little bit of my credit which we'll all say that's bs but the education piece the preparation piece 
uh, the comp- the competition is is does a lot of it, but numbers, success numbers in the field this year were freaking off the Richter man. It was yeah, it was yeah. so oh, freaking yeah. cool to see that. See, that's yeah, what I'm. It's, it's, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, so, yeah, it's given folks a reason to tr- start training earlier too, which is something completely new to a lot of hunters. Like usually, like they're starting to train, you know, in August. Some of them, yeah, August twenty eighth. Some of them. Yeah. So, <laughs> I've been guilty of that. I, uh, that's, yeah. and that's, I, I like that point because I, I think a lot of us get caught up in, in day to day life. And, you know, when you're talking specifically about archery elk hunting in September, right? It's such, it's so wildly different than, than everything else we do. And, and, you know, I fall into this trap where, you know, come, come April, uh, me and my girls, we're out there chasing turkeys and then we're gearing up for all our bear hunts. And, and for, for most of May and June, me and my girls are chasing bears and, and that's what we do. And then we kind of have this lull of, you know, end of June through end of August where, you know, my wife wants to go to the lake and we want to go camp and we want to go, you know, do, do non hunting related stuff because my life is, you know, very much centered around hunting. And so, so is it my, my wife is the only one in the family that doesn't hunt. And so uh, I try to make those those months in in uh, in these off months, you know, more about her and and whatnot. But man, it'll sneak up on you. Like last year, I was not yeah. like September snuck up on me last year, and and I am normally not one to let September sneak up on me. But you know, we'd sold that property and and uh, bought this new place. Which, by the way, um, the dude that bought my old property, his name is Josh, super cool guy. Uh, he lives. He's in Hawaii. And, and he bought this property in, in Clark Fork, Idaho. And he's, he's like one of those just salt of the earth kind of dudes. Um, him and I talk all the time that, that 26 acre little chunk of bare land might be a great place to have a hunt fest. I'd I'd have to talk to him and see if he'd be up for it. Uh, but it's, it's got all sorts of different terrain to set. I've always wanted to do like a 3d shoot there because of how the terrain is. And it's, it's very, uh, consistent with what a lot of hunters will find throughout North Idaho and West Montana, you know? And so anyway, that's a side note, but, um, what the hell was I talking about before that? I got, I got sidetracked. Oh, the, the fact that the, the, I don't know when I hear, yeah, go ahead. When I hear you offering up free land, man, we're there. (laughs) Well, I don't know. I I, I don't know. I don't know if it's free, but I I bet you (laughs) we could work something out because Josh, he, like I said, he's a great guy. Uh, in fact, he got, he, uh, he got a tag for next year. I'm going to take him out on, uh, on like a bear hunt and probably an elk hunt and whatnot. So, uh, I'm excited for that. He, he really is. He's a cool dude. So anyway, um, yeah, that, that, that's one of the, the nice things about these kind of events that are held during the summer is it kind of, it keeps you accountable when maybe it, without them, you wouldn't keep yourself accountable, you know, and, and man, I, I don't want to go show up to a 3D archery range with a bunch of other hunters if I'm not well polished with my bow. You know what I mean? I'm not just going to knock the dust off, show up to a 3D right. competition shoot, or or even if it's not competitive, and, and uh, you know, embarrass myself. I'm going to make sure I'm dialed. You know what I mean? And so right. that's... But, but some of that, I mean, that that's what keeps a lot of people from the venues, right? I mean, you know, mm-hmm. be it Western yeah. Hunt or some other shoot or, you know, just going to the range is if it's crowded. But, I mean, if you look at something that's, you know, causing more detriment, that's what it is, right? Just yeah. get out there because not everyone's shooting 12s, right? I mean, we went out on the range last year and man, the group we were with, I mean, we got, we had straight killers in the group and I'm going to say how many arrows just went, I mean, yep. there's a video on our Instagram and the three of us, and I, and we did that and I did that intentionally. The three of us at the start of the video, he hits steel. Jeff tells me I suck. And then he sends a bad shot. <laughs> <laughs> so So, you know what I mean? And it's like, look, we, we, <laughs> The camaraderie out on the course, I don't care what you're shooting. If you're shooting fives or you're shooting twelves, it's worth being out there. We owe it to our way of life to go and get better, right? So, you know, I'm preaching kind of on the soapbox, but don't, you know, if somebody is listening, don't don't stay away from your 3D range because it's a crowd. You're not going to get better, and then that pressure is going to lend itself to you dialing in. So, sorry, soapbox. No, absolutely. Um, Jim, Jeff. one point too. Um, so like like you, I'm in a similar situation. My wife does not hunt. 
Um, I spend a lot of time hunting and the summers for us historically have been like family time, you know, like, yeah. So hunting preparation goes to the back seat. So we have been really intentional on trying to make this a good event for, let's say the wife doesn't hunt for the wives and the kids. So we're going to bring like, um, 3d nerf ranges for the kids. We're going to do, um, instruction for the kids. We're going to have little bows for them to shoot. Um, we're going to have like cornhole tournament. We'll have vendors there. We'll have food there. Um, we're, we're dabbling with like live music and just stuff to keep the family entertained while the, you know, the hunter of the family is participating and, and doing things. So we wanted to be really awesome. intentional on it yeah, and, and make it like a family vacation so that, that it's not, you know, another selfish weekend. Yeah, yeah, no, and and that that's that that really is important. There's there's all sorts of events that I've missed over the years because, you know, I I don't want to take a couple of days to go like like Idaho Idaho would have, uh, and I th- I think they still do it. Uh, the Idaho Bow Hunting Association or whatever, um, th- they would do like this jamboree down in in central Idaho, and and it was a big deal. Like you guys are talking about, there was you know, um there was an elk calling contest three 3d range and and some other different events but it was super hunting centric and like that's just boring as shit for my wife she, she don't want to go do that and so and i don't want to i don't want to spend those couple of days of of time away from her that would take away from my time in like september or even november whitetail season or or june you know spring bear what whatever the case is and and so by making it a little bit more family oriented, I got a question for uh, Jeff and Efren. When it come when you're talking about um, some of those those other events, like you had the um, cornhole competition, yeah. who would win between me and Guy? Because I I don't know what I don't know. Guy's really cocky when it comes to cornhole. Guy's cocky about everything. <laughs> hey, I almost took the ship last year at the cornhole comp. You just, did. just for the record, dude, I was one team away, <laughs> and it was my partner Armando Martinez with the bow hitch, simply savage <laughs> solutions that lost the game for us. Period. Right? I'm calling you out. I'm saying who it was. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that's savage, brother. We had a round where he only threw like half a point, if that. <laughs> 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 hey, oh, where, where guys where guy guy is cocky and he talks it i'll tell you what he did back it up i've seen i well i didn't see it but i i saw the results of him calling in an axis deer oh he really said one day yeah one day he said i'm gonna call that motherfucker in <laughs> an axis deer <laughs> yeah that's what he did oh in. sweet i'm gonna have to we're gonna have to do another podcast about that one guy yeah that one was pretty cool but but down in the lower corner at least on my screen that the tortoise there he uh, called in an owl dad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So that, you guys all was... like hunt together quite a bit, huh? Yeah, we tried to. Yeah. Sweet. Good for you guys. I, yeah, I'm it curious. Was pretty funny. Get, getting back to this, uh, this, uh, blah, blah, blah. I keep getting tongue tied here. So Western Hunt Fest. When you are doing these seminars, tell, tell me again what seminars are available, like the educational seminars. So, you know, our, our elk calling seminar is, is, you know, top, top tier, top list. Um, Joe Who? will be at Joe Gillia, Elk Bros fame. You um, have, you have Joe Gillia doing that? Yeah, we have Joe Holy at a couple of events. They just let Tony anybody Gilbert- in. Ah, we got Tony <laughs> Gilbertson, um, Jermaine Hodge, um, and our oh, list nice. is just going to keep growing. So we got the Phelps boys over there. Um you know, and, and we won't give up the, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, and that's just one seminar, right? We're going to, we're looking at doing a solo hunting seminar, uh, kind of a pack dump seminar. Uh, and then, you know, Jeff, as, as much as I, uh, blew smoke up, so to speak up Ephraim's butt, you know, Jeff, when you look at what he does in terms of the kids involvement, um, teaching kids about hunting, <clears throat> why we hunt the respect for hunting and is one of the best callers, that I've ever been around um, and his ability to translate his calling ability into instruction to these kids is, you know, again, I'm going to say it right is second to none. And this is not me being biased to, to my boys. Um, it's legitimate. So we'll have our kids calling seminar um, as well as the other things that Jeff mentioned. So man, see, we need to get, we need to get one of these up here. 
We'll get it. I'd love to get my kids in that elk hunt, dude. Well, I got one I, of my well, daughters. She would. She would you clean got, house. You tell us. Elk call ah, dang, yeah. You tell us what. Uh, <laughs> tell us what venue you want to make this year, and we'll make sure that the whole family has tickets. We, so we we could definitely we could definitely figure out if you if you were serious about doing it this year in like either North Idaho or Montana. You know, I, I li- I'm right on the border, so I kind of like. I feel like I, I I'm part of both communities, you know. Um, I we, we could totally make something happen. Um, I I the back to the seminars is is there or in the in the future going forward with this uh, Western Hunt Fest? Are, are you is there uh, discussions or um, expansions on what the educational part of this these uh, the these uh, this festival is? Um, in terms of like maybe other seminars, other types of, you know, because we've all, uh, I don't know, you've, we, we can get pack dump kind of seminar anywhere and, and all that kind of stuff. I think it's, I think that there is a big difference when, when you can get somebody in a room with a, with a bugle tube, that's really effective, you know, that in-person interaction is way different than what you can hear on a podcast or a YouTube video. Uh, so I think that that like I encourage all hunters if you if you have the opportunity to go to any kind of seminar where there is a live caller and and it, it, that they are there giving you you know their their perspective as to how elk calling you know comes together for them or whatever um, it's way better than YouTube and, and podcasts and I and this is coming from a guy that does an entire series on on calling elk uh, you know. Uh, on a podcast and so um I, I i there's just a big difference so that that part is super important uh what are the things in the past or not in the past in the future are you guys looking for adding seminar wise and uh, by, so, by the way i i need to i need to just pause my video because you guys are wigging out and I, it's my internet so <laughs> bear with me okay um you know we talk about future you know we really want to emphasize on you know our our women's side of things right i mean um, we, we feel like there's a hole in, in that educational piece that's focused. Um, so we're really working on that and we're actually working on getting a couple speakers at some news this year. Um, again, it's solidifying things and making sure schedules align. Um, I don't want to say mean like women, I don't want to drop instructors. something and not come through. Yeah, women instructors. I mean, uh, you know, we're talking to one right now, and it's not just hunting. It's it's outdoors. It's foraging. Um, it's living off the land uh, as well as hunting. So, see, my really wife trying be, to bring that. She would be she would be on that like a drunk on free peanuts, man. If there was some kind of foraging, uh, sustainability, homesteading kind of topic, and yeah. that man might she she'd be all over that. Yep. So we're working on that, and you know, we're hoping to bring that you know this year. Um, and then we're just going to continue to, you know, to grow those seminars. And really, we want it to be something, you know, hearing you say that it solidifies the reason that we reached out to who we reached out to. Um, but we really want the suggestions to come in. Right. If if somebody attends the event and says, hey, I'm not so much an elk hunter, uh, I'm really into how high country mule deer you know we got a couple people that we can look at for that and talk to and get them to the event if it's predator situation i mean ultimately where we want to take this event um doesn't stop with archery so you know we're we're really looking at sky's the limit and you know we say ultimate championship or ultimate predator you know you imagine across the the demographic and different means and men take we want this event. This event will encompass all of that. And I mean, hence, it doesn't say the Western Hunt Fest archery shoot, right? It's the Western Hunt Fest. There's any, yeah. so many areas that we can go with that. And that's where we're aiming for. Yeah, I agree. I think there's so much information out there available for like September archery elk hunting, but there's not a ton of information for October rifle hunting for elk. There's not a ton of, uh, you know, right. mule deer is kind of a big topic, but like, where can somebody that really wants to learn how to be a really effective muzzleloader November elk hunter, wh- where can they go? And that's kind of where I'm trying exactly. to uh, branch out a little bit on, on this show. A little, you know, I, I, I did a couple of school of November podcast episodes where it was, you know, a whitetail centered you know, and then we, I had Guy Eastman on talking about his, cause he's really good at this uh, muzzle load late season elk. Um, so if you can, if you can incorporate that into, into this, that was of, actually a really good episode with, uh, with Guy. 
Yeah, that was excellent episode. I mean, the information that that he dropped on there was just yeah, that was bitching. Yeah, and he's got he's got so much experience, and they've got this. You know, Wyoming has this great late season, and it's 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 so like primed for inner intercepting these these elk that are moving to the winter ground. I, I, anyway, that's a whole other topic. I, I I absolutely love that topic, but um. What about things like, are you guys, one of the things I want to talk about in 2024, and I want to get your guys' take on this, because obviously you guys are, you're all seasoned hunters. You're all into this, uh, this lifestyle as, as, uh, as you are, obviously you, you, you're kind of into it when you start a hunt festival, um, you know, there's, there's a level of commitment that is above maybe other people's commitments with that. So, uh, I want to uh, chat about well, like what your guys' take would be on doing some kind of um, discussion, you know, whether it's on a, a podcast or, or one of these festivals, but like hunt etiquette, yeah, because everybody talks about hunt ethic and and ethic, you know, um, a fair chase and ethics and all that kind of stuff. But etiquette is different. Hunt et- etiquette is a completely different topic that has not really been touched on very well. And, uh, man, when you go out into a crowded unit, you could tell that people don't know shit about hunting etiquette. And, and oh, that's, yeah. that's, I think where, uh, a lot of the frustration that we get on social media, uh, you know, with, with hunters kind of ripping each other's souls out of their body online kind of thing. And, and the hostility, I think a lot of that comes from this lack of etiquette out there on the mountain. And and people are still pissed six months six months later. Like there, I had an incident in September. I'm still pissed about. And and uh, what do you guys think about that? Would that be something that would go over at like a seminar on like a seminar level outside of like a podcast or a YouTube video? Absolutely. That's hey, a. I'm going to interrupt you guys real quick. I have to jump off. I got to go grab my daughter from volleyball. But before you guys get too in depth on that, I got I have to go. Efren. What am I going to do without you in my life, brother? <laughs> I'm coming back, dog. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right, man. <laughs> See you, brother. <laughs> See you, brother. Thanks, guys. All right, so, man, Efren, you're, Efren you're asking to get me going. You're asking well, to get I, me well, going, I mean, right? We it, talk it, about that. It's a serious. I, it's a serious topic, guy. That I think. I think that I don't know if people are like afraid to talk about it, or if people are hesitant to bring it up because of maybe some of the reactions you get. Or they think that people just don't want to hear it. But I have found in some of the things that I've been I've been talking about and and um, posting about that there is a serious interest in like an overarching conversation about etiquette and what is right and wrong on the mountain. I think part of that, my opinion, part of that stems from the air quote newly acquired members to our lifestyle Mm -hmm. right some folks just don't know and i think you get to a point where you know and and for me i don't experience it so it's hard for me to talk about to a point right where we talk about this overcrowding issue and people stepping on people and things like that it don't matter to me if you got 10 guys out in front of me i'm going to turn the corner and i'm going to find some spot to hunt that i can you know take my solo adventure and not worry about them man Um, i am gonna you're gonna get so much hate mail over saying that i i've said that a bunch and every time well you don't hunt the unit that i hunt it's like you know i hunt one of the most crowded units in idaho don't tell me i'll go i'll go on an otc hunt to stay close to home and not give a living a flying chili bean fart about how many people are in that OTC unit, where the plates are from. I don't care. I'm there for an experience. And if I have to hike an extra two miles or look at a hillside that no one else wants to climb and climb it to, to have the hunt that I want to have, that's my etiquette, man. I'll, I sat on a hillside two years ago, watching seven or eight vehicles park in front of the same little timber area and all walk in. And not, you know what I mean? So it's not, <clears throat> it's, it, it's not the first guy that pulls up or the 10th guy that pulls up that's at fault. When you see it happen every single day for a week, they all know that they're going into that area. They've been there together, you know, whether they're there together or not, they've been there for four or five days and they're still doing it. So it's like, well, I'm here. So I'm going to stay here while I'm here. I don't care that you're, that's the problem with our demographic. 
right? Is that we're always at these, these odds with things and we just don't care because we want this. Then we complain about it. But I just pulled up to the same spot four days and I watched every one of you pull up almost at the same time as I'm glassing and you still walk in, but don't complain about it then. Find another area. So if the area so that I, I, sorry. So you Go think ahead. like on, on that, that point, something <clears throat> like that to your point is like kind of this lack of flexibility that hunters have and, and due to that lack of flexibility and ability to change like from plan A to plan B to plan C to plan D, um, they're, they're pissing themselves off because they know the problem's going to exist, but yeah. yet it's everybody else's fault, right? Yeah. 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 It's just, it's like one of those things that we just like to complain about, yeah. right? It's, it's the six, five creed more of stepping into the woods. We just want to complain about it. 30 trucks at the trailhead. Where the hell does that happen? Cause I haven't seen it. I'm in, I'm in the woods the entire month of September. Plus my hunting activities after September, I don't pull up to a trailhead and ever see 30 trucks. <laughs> I don't, Not to I say don't it even, doesn't happen. I mean, dude, I don't even understand the trailhead uh, topic because I, I don't like no shit. There's going to be a bunch of trucks at a trailhead. You're at a trailhead. Go to places that aren't trailheads. That, I, it, I, it, I, go it, ahead, it, Jeff. Well, I've, I've actually hunted a, a specific place where there is a single trailhead and you you come in it's in colorado but you come in through new mexico and the whole road up to the, the property is new mexico and you could only access it at the colorado side and when you pull up there will be cars lined in every single parking spot filling into the new mexico area so i i see people's frustration in a place like that Especially yeah. when you have guys that are, um, you'll be you'll be in an area, and you'll be working an elk, and you'll have guys that know you're there, know you're working the elk, and they'll bomb in on on that specific situation. Um, and that's that's more of the etiquette that I that's I the would etiquette. Have yep. With. Yep. Right. Yep. But the way to avoid that is not go to that freaking trailhead. Yep. yep. It's yeah, that and, easy. And, yeah, and that, <laughs> and that's a. Th go ahead, Jeff. <clears throat> yes. So and then like. Even furthermore, with that being said, like in those specific areas, you have a lot of respectful people, but then you'll have those few idiots that are in there, like purposely following people that they know are really good hunters. It's it's really bad in the specific area that I'm in. There's some some guys who do really well, and there's guys that target where they're gonna go. I've heard I've heard a like a how guy do they tell me know? The Are they putting like those apple chip things on their truck, or like how how do they know that mm -hmm. stuff? I have I no clue, it. but I've heard I've heard somebody say so and so hunts here, and I saw him in here, so I'm gonna go to that specific spot, and I'm like, what? Interesting. You're gonna go and compete with him. As opposed to find your own spot, like it's crazy when, to me. When do you think will there ever be a time that hunters will come to the realization? that these really successful hunters and these really good hunters with the exception that there are exceptions to what I'm about to say, but for the most part, these guys that are really successful year after year, they're super consistent. It's not about the stop or, or the spot they're going to. It's not about the a particular trailhead they're going to it has nothing to do with it. You look at like Cody rich, man, that guy can go anywhere and find a freaking elk and kill it. Right. It, 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 Cam, Cam Haynes, he's like that. He, he'll find an elk anywhere and, and he'll go kill it. It's not about the spot. It's it's there. There's something beyond just a locale and the etiquette thing, which, by the way, what you talked about with uh, Jeff, what, what you mentioned about, you know, approaching one state from the other side's border. People, for some reason, are really hesitant to hunt on borders. Uh, super effective in a lot of cases. Uh, that's that's a whole other podcast in its own. But, you know, everybody talks about how, well, you know, the trail hit is a lot more crowded than it was 20 years ago. So is Walmart and so is Disneyland. We have to yep. learn to to move with the times and understand that it's not just one person's fault. It's not non-residents fault. It's not residents fault. It's a combination of all sorts of things taking place. There's fewer hunters doing dove hunting and pheasant hunting but there's way more hunters doing archery elk hunting 
than there were 20 years ago, right? So these these lines, these demographics, they shift and things mold and meld with time and, and changes. And and to sit there and act like it's still 1999 and then get pissed off about, uh, you know, at, at everybody else for wanting to experience that without being flexible, that's where we get etiquette issues. People say, fuck you. I've been hunting this drainage for 20 years, and now I'm going to go in there and hunt it right on top of you. Yeah, you know what? Yep. Say you guys. Yeah, that's my spot. Get out. Yeah, I mean that's a rough one, right? I mean, I came into I came into hunting, you know, in my early twenties. I came into elk hunting. Shit, I only got a few years under my belt, right? So in my forties, and I've just never seen an issue with it, right? If somebody says, "Hey, work," you know, messages me, right? Oh man, I'm struggling, but I don't, I don't have that problem but maybe it's a different view because i don't know what it was like in the air quote heyday right when there was no one in the unit before elk hunting or chasing mule deer in the high country was this big blown up thing and then where i started hunting it was already so thin that i had to work for every pound of meat that i got for weeks and weeks and weeks yeah you know a couple years you might you know in my original stomping grounds um it 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 so I think the perspective is a little bit different um, when it comes to that, right? And then you get that we don't need any more hunters, you know, because it's already so crowded. But, well, then you look at what's going on across all landscapes and the politics behind, you know, hunting right now. Do we not need any more hunters? I mean, it's, right. So th there's all these there's all these different questions, you know that that lifelong hunter that grew up hunting you know gmu 22 and my grandpa taught my dad and my dad and my grandpa took me and i used to go with my uncles and you know all that it's it's fine and dandy and beautiful but the landscape is just different now right and if you have been hunting that country for 20 years and you can't get away from people maybe you're not the greatest goddamn woodsman or hunter on the landscape yeah, I'm, I'm laughing because it's like it's such an obvious thing that it just does not seem to be that obvious it, to people you know it it's like any sense. it's like i i just here's the thing i i would I, I think that we can all agree that every western state has two or three units that are for sure without a question overrun with too many tags whether they're resident or non-resident uh, not enough camping spots, not enough country for, for people to get away from each other. Yes. So I, I just want to say that so that people can't say, well, you haven't hunted this particular unit and blah, 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 blah. Listen, I could be the only person in one of my units. And, and, and the thing is, is it's, it's like been overrun with wolves. So everybody that knows anything about hunting elk, they're not going to be in that unit. Right. But I can go to two units over and there's like, 20,000 people in this unit. We all have those units. The point is, I don't care. I don't care what you think is a limitation to you. It's not a limit limitation to me because I can always get away from people. I can always get away. And I hate, I am not, I am not your dude that it's going to go back country freaking hunting 15 miles back. Uh, Cause I hunt solo. I'm not going to go kill an elk 15 miles back. I have a I have a buddy Jeff Bynum up here in uh, North Idaho, and and he he made this post this year where he said, you know, a lot of you pride yourselves with with how far back you get to find an elk. I pride myself with how close to the truck I can get an elk down because I have to pack <laughs> it out myself. He's exactly right, man. Right. And 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 that's the thing is is like uh, again, I'm ninety percent ninety ninety five percent of the time I'm hunting solo, with the exception my girls are usually with me, and so. Even with that, even without getting 10, 12, 15 miles back, I could still be by myself. Have I gotten my, my toes stepped on? Yep, absolutely. Have I stepped on other people's toes? Yep, absolutely. The difference is, is I identify that and I make sure that those hunters know that I'm getting out of their shit and, and they were there first. And, and, you know, sometimes I don't get that same respect back, but I think that that doesn't change the fact that that's still what I'm going to do and the decision I'm going to make. And you have to be flexible. I, I just don't understand this tantrum thing uh, th th that we have going on where everybody thinks that 
Like, how do you not get away from people? What are you freaking just standing on the road? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get staying it. on the trails. Like, you know, uh, so in that same unit that we're, that I was talking about the overcrowded one. Mm-hmm. So I'll go into that unit. And the, it's just, the one with the trailhead. I, yeah. With the, with the overcrowded trailhead. So people are weak, man. It's, it's the society we live in. People are so weak. So in that same unit, I'll go there for the first week with the overcrowding and everybody comes back in the dark and they all sit there at their trucks and they talk. And I kid you not, nine out of 10 of those guys are saying, oh, there's no elk in here. There's too many people, Um, blah, 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 complaining, 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 right? Well, I just came out of the same woods and I'm interacting with three to four bulls. I'm finding the elk. I'm not seeing the people. I see their their vehicles, but I'm not seeing the people. And it's just the mindset of the of the people nowadays, I think personally. Like yeah. the etiquette, people are weak, man. People are gonna if you go to that unit two weeks after the season starts, that overcrowding is gone. It's mm-hmm. gone. There's nobody in there. Some sometimes Everybody. it's even vice versa. Sometimes it's the first few first two weeks, nobody's there. And it's the second two weeks. It's yep. super crowded, but it's your job as a hunter to figure out what that, what that, what is. that is. I right. have, I have a section of a unit that is normally, I, I mean, in, in North Idaho, people complain about this particular unit all the time. They're like, this used to be the best elk unit in the entire state, blah, 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 blah. And now it's overrun with all these people that have moved here and, and they, they you know, blah. <sighs> There's two of them in the panhandle because like, Idaho breaks down, you know, things into regions. Panhandle of Idaho has two really good units, but everybody thinks they're ruined. But in one of those units, I I can go down and I do this every year. In fact, a lot of the footage that I show of my uh, some of these call-ins and that uh, that that footage I sent you guy where I I shot that arrow at that bull and it was just like bouncing off of every limb that was in between me and him, <laughs> that real painful video. Yeah. And it's where I've, where I've, uh, I've hit a bunch of bulls, uh, or where, where I've killed a bunch of bulls that, that, that particular area, man, I'm, I'm, I am here to tell you in the unit that on, if you were to just rely on Facebook is the most crowded unit in the lower 48 that unit I have, I have the entire, there's like three major mountain, uh, systems within this, uh, within this un- uh, unit. I have one of those completely to myself. I, I see maybe one or two other hunters and it borders another, um, it borders another unit that's in another uh, region, the way Idaho breaks them down. And so a lot of people don't like to hunt those borders again, going back to that. And, and the hunters that I usually see are the guys that are hunting that other unit. And so we're just kind of crossing trails. And, and anyway, the point is, is it is so it's like, there is, I don't want to be like overly mean. I don't want to kick 2024 off with like, you know, this really mean, <laughs> you know, mean old Patriot. Western huntsman Jim over there talking shit. But man, there is just, I I'm so sick of hearing about how fucking overcrowded everything is. And I can't get away from anybody. Like, get off your four-wheeler, get in the woods, get out there. I know it can be frustrating. Some days, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get away from other people. It's just circumstantially, that's how that's going to work out. But I promise you, if you put the work in, you can get away from people. And that that means... How much How much of that... Sorry, Jimbo. I thought you were no, done. Go ahead, My man. apologies. How much of that do you think is just a talk point for hunters, right? We We, we fall into the hype pretty easily right oh, i, I think mean, a lot of it is it, right and and for me a lot of it seems like it's just one of those things that we should be voicing or complaining about not that i really see you know you know what i'm saying um you know it it, it goes into talking about rounds right if we go you know down the six five creed more now there's guys that are staunch six five advocates and then you have guys on the other end of the spectrum and say they should not be in the elk woods right um but I almost feel like with with a lot of this stuff in our demographic, it's just what is that talking point right now? Um, look at the wolf situation in Colorado, right? There wasn't much action from folks. And then after the wolves get released, I see post, 
you know, every yeah, day. For everybody a week posted that say, about that wolf coming out you, of that creek. Yeah. Yep. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Right. It was the same post and it was like, okay, so this is what we do as a demographic. And it's always post something, right? We're not proactive in saying, hey, CPW or, you know, Idaho Fish and Game. Hey, this unit seems to be a little bit crowded. You know, can we do something to protect the residents? Idaho did that, you know, with that limit and all that. They but did, and but, it, but the residents are still bitching about the non-residents here in Idaho, and it's ludicrous. Of course, of course, right? And and that's going to be something that we just have to figure out how we deal with as a demographic, but we're not doing any favors to each other um, in the big picture when we do that, right? So I think, I yeah. mean, that's a long, you know, winded version of, I think it's just the talking point and people want to hear themselves complain about it. Um unfortunately it is what it is i think right? the talking point what you're talking about guy is exactly what it is i remember when i when i was like i i think i was 11 or 12 it was just before i was old enough to get uh my big game like i was old enough to fe- hunt ducks and pheasants and whatnot but i wasn't big game eligible yet i was like a year out so i'm i'm out on this uh we're out on this family elk hunt and and we're camped up on this mountain where where it's it's real like there's a lot of quakey uh, you know, sagebrushy kind of country, real high country, a lot of open area, a lot of, a lot of timber. And this is in Utah, this old man, we're sitting around, it's like uh lunchtime or something. And everybody's back at camp and, and just kind of hanging out. And, and like this old man is complaining about how back in the day, it was a lot better hunting, a lot better. Hunting. And, and I'm talking about that. We're talking about hell, a super early nineties uh late 80s sometime in that in that time frame and and this guy's going you know back in the day there were elk all over this these mountains and 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 which wasn't actually true because i i looked into the his, historical um you know harvest <laughs> statistics and whatnot uh later in life i i know you know you know elk were not all that prominent in in utah uh but anyway as he's saying that you know 20 years ago is a lot better there is like this string of 19 or 20 elk running across the mountain behind him, like, like three, 400 yards behind him. And we're all watching these elk. Everybody starts jumping up, you know, and, but as he's bitching about how there's no elk, there's all these elk, there they are, you know, and, and, and you, you think about that, man, like, like you go into coffee shop back then and they'd be like, Oh, the hunting, you know, the good old days are behind us. Every, every, like, decade of my life they have been saying the same thing 20 years ago is a lot better 20 years ago is a lot better and i am not saying that uh it's permanently or there hasn't been any changes and it's permanently going to get better or it's permanently going to get worse but i am saying that i have noticed that people are much quicker to complain about the current status than they are to make uh a, a, maybe a positive uh perspective or analysis as to the situation on the ground what say you yeah, all, I 110 percent agree. Right. It was kind of sitting on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. Um, you know, you're that's one thing that's that's and, you know, me, man, I'll start philosophizing on on what hunting means to me. But that's one of the beautiful things about what we do is is your hunt is what you make it mm-hmm. right. I don't care what animal you're chasing, what, what terrain features you like your hunt is what you make it. So if you want to be around people or you don't want to be around people. That choice is yours. You just gotta you just gotta turn left or turn right and understand that you're you're making your hunt. Now, if you sit there and focus on the heyday as you saw it and and how negative you want to be, guess what? You're gonna have a, a negative time. That that's not why I'm in the woods, man. That's not what it means to me. I'm not gonna sit there and focus on that. If yeah. it's hard, it's hard. It's always hard. I don't care if there's 60 animals, you know, it, on the landscape in this area that, you know, is supposed to have 150. I still gotta kill one out of 150, or I still gotta kill one out of the 60. Y- you gotta look at it in terms of what you're doing. You know, if it's about yeah, road hunting absolutely. and getting out and going pop, then get your rifle tags for late season when they're in the low country and you could roll around with everybody else. And, you know, and if you complain about that, I, I don't think, I think to some point people were just wired to focus on the negative stuff and not make the best out of whatever situation. I, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's like that for anything. It's not just a hunting thing, but I, I will right. tell you, I, you know, I, as, like when you talk about like social media groups and whatnot, I'm in a lot of different types of groups. Like I'm, I'm, I just bought myself a new drum set. 
like a month ago. I just got it. I just got it all set up. Uh, I can turn over here and look at it. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen because I'm way into my drums, right? I, I've, I've, I've loved the drums for since I was a kid. One of my first loves. And uh, so I'm in all these drum organizations and, and I'm also in like other musician groups and I'm in like business owner groups and I'm in uh, sales organizations, all these different like things that uh, like touch my life in a different way, in a different facet. And and I could tell you there's hostility in those in environments and there's hostility mm-hmm. in those groups, but it's nothing like hunters, man. It is that nobody rips each other apart like hunters do. Uh, like, like somebody will make fun of somebody's drum set. Oh, that, that drum set sucks, you know, and, and kind of people will laugh and be like, nah, you know, don't be a jerk. And, and they you know, that's the end of it. And it. yeah, everybody yeah. moves on where, man, you do, you say somebody's rifle sucks on, on a, on a hunting group. And I'm using that as a, you know, a stupid example, but still an example and you'll get ripped apart. And, and like Jeff, what I haven't ever, I, I know guys perspective pretty well. We've had a lot of podcasts together. What is, what is your perception, Jeff, as to what hunting used to be and like what hunting is now with the influence of social media? Um, okay. So I'm a lifelong hunter. So I, I grew up hunting. I, I mean, I've been doing it since. Hold I on, was... brother. I think Jim just bounced off. No, I, I, I just. Oh, oh anytime, you killed your video. Okay. Whenever my internet gets shaky, I just shut my video off for a minute and let oh, the internet okay. catch up. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. So yeah, no, I'm a lifelong hunter. So um, I will say say that I do see more people in the woods now, but I I have a lot more encounters with with the animals I'm hunting now too. Um, yeah. I. Growing up, I was really fortunate in the family I grew up in. They were all hunters. Um, they were all really good hunters. I stepped into a good situation where I killed a lot of animals really early. And then I stopped hunting with them, and I had to learn how to hunt after that. Um, so there was a little a little period. <laughs> I'm worried my daughters are going to have saw. that same experience. Yeah, they will. Uh, <laughs> um, there was a little area in there where I was like, man, it's really changed. But that was just because I had to learn how to hunt. But for me, I have encounters everywhere I go in the areas that people are saying that they're overcrowded and these units suck. There's no elk here. The elk are not vocal here, this, that, and the third. I am I am seeing different results than I'm hearing. So, I mean, I don't know. So, and Jeff, are, are, you, are, are you originally from Colorado or? I'm from Southern Colorado too. Southern Colorado? So I'm only, yeah, I'm only two hours away from where I grew up. Oh, wow. And I still hunt a lot of the units that I, I grew up hunting. And to me, I'm seeing bigger bulls now than I ever have. So, and, and I'm getting and a lot more encounters. I, I would uh, like, it's so funny you say that, man. Like when I, when I was a kid hunting with all the dudes that I hunted with, like none of them knew how to elk hunt. So I, I actually gave, I, I kind of didn't really elk hunt most of my twenties and partly into my thirties because as a kid, I'd go out with these dudes that they tried to hunt elk like you hunt a mule deer, you know, and, and like, I just thought they were full of shit. Like I thought, I thought elk were like this fake animal. <laughs> like, you know, what's that bird? Everybody goes out and has to learn how to hunt when they're kids. The snipe, you ever go snipe hunting? The snipe. You know, that, that doesn't <laughs> that actually exist. I, I, I thought <laughs> elk hunting was like this snipe hunting kind of thing for a minute there. I mean, not really, but it, it was, it was similar where it, there was just like this. I, I didn't really ever see elk except for, when we were not hunting like that, uh, that story I was telling you with those elk running across the mountain behind that guy complaining about never seeing elk. Uh, yeah. Like they, there, there were elk everywhere. If I was fishing or, or going camping or something, <laughs> but during hunting season, we never saw him, you know? And so that, it was like this phantom, yeah. but it, it's, it's so interesting how you describe that because like now, like take this last season, for example, uh, I, I didn't even fling an arrow this last September. I was I was being a little picky this year. I was kind of pulling a guy du planchier where I, I wanted this big bowl. <laughs> and the problem is I was is, proud of you, bro. Uh, I just <laughs> I, I just not that good. I can't I that's the last time I'm doing that guy. So you only be proud of 2023 <laughs> because listen, man, I am I am no uh like what am I, Chris Rowe? I am I, I'll shoot whatever walks out in front of me. And so um anyway, I was being picky, so I didn't fling an arrow. Uh you know, but I get back and I'm analyzing and, and all these people are talking about how um, 
it was the worst September ever. The bulls were not talking. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. I didn't see any sign. Um, the wolves ate all the elk. Uh, the non-residents stole the elk, put them in horse trailers and took them back to Washington uh, and California. And, you know, all these things, all these things, the excuses that people make. And, and man, I'm sitting there reading all this shit. And I'm like, man, that was by far, hands down and without a doubt, the most active elk season I have ever had in my life. I called in more bulls. And you can ask my daughters because they were, they were in fact, they filmed most of it. So it's not like uh, you, I can prove it every got day. The receipts, for two buddy. Weeks, I've got the receipts, man, every day for, <laughs> for, uh, for like two weeks straight when I, when I was taking them, my, my girls out and then they had to get back to other stuff. But, um, we called in a bull every, every time we went out, like literally every time they yep. were like my good luck charms, man. And they saw me pass on little bulls. They saw me, they couldn't figure out why I didn't shoot the spike. I should have shot that spike, man. He was a big old spike for a spike. He was a big spike. But I called in. I've never horns. ever heard anyone say that in my life, dude. He was a big spike. Like it was, That's it was a big odd. Old spike. It was odd. Go, I knew. I, I I could see him coming in the timber, and all I saw were was the spike antlers, right? And it's kind of dark timber. And all of a sudden, he steps out, and you can always tell like a spike elk looks like a big mature mule deer si- body size, really, right? In, in a lot of ways, this it was not the case, man. This sucker, I don't know what was up with that, but he was he was a spike, not like not like a big ass antlered spike, just a big bodied spike. And he was a, like just a huge spike. Anyway, I should have, I should have smoked. My girls were mad at me for not shooting him. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's the that, forbidden that's fruit the, here. So I, I, yeah, I love, yeah. spikes. I would love to kill a big old spike. Oh, I should have been. And, and, and you know, what yeah. was cool is he was like <laughs> only a half a mile from the truck and, uh, yeah. it would have, it would have been perfect. But anyway, I, I didn't do it, and so this season goes through. Um, I, I end up not tagging out in September, and I, I come back, and I'm reading all these people, and they're like, man, it was the worst September ever. They weren't talking. I don't know, guys. Is it just me, or do people come up with every excuse in the world as to why they didn't tag out, and it's always the non-resident, the wolf, the overpopulated units, the too many tags, the fishing game, uh, the president, like it's usually Biden's fault. Uh, some people it's Trump's fault and they're definitely wrong. Uh, and, and everybody else, you know, uh, th- there's just all these excuses, man. What's up with that? You know, what's funny is, uh, I was just telling somebody this the other day, um, in Colorado, according to the public, the rut doesn't start until October because the elk don't speak in, in September. But my <laughs> perspective that of that is, yeah, I hear them. I hear them from September 2nd to the 30th, every single season, no matter what unit I'm in, no matter where I'm hunting, I hear them. They're talking. These people are not where the elk are, and they're saying, oh, the elk aren't talking. Right. Yeah. Do you think it might be that you're not in the area that the elk are? Exactly. That's the key right there, right? Yeah. If you're not hearing them, you're not where they're at. I mean, period, point blank. You're not where they're at. If anybody, anybody that knows where I live, I live, I live right at the base of the mountains in North where I'm at. I have elk on my property. So I'll just put it that way. I hear elk screaming their heads off from about August 25 until about October 15. And it doesn't change much. They're screaming their heads off. Sometimes they're more vocal at night and sometimes they're more vocal in the day, but I'll be sitting there on my back deck reading comments about how the elk are silent when I get home from elk hunting, listening to elk screaming their heads off 200 feet behind my house. I, I, you know what? Silly. I think some, some of that is expectation to hear this, this rut fest too, right? If the elk are yeah. quiet, guess what I'm doing? I'm, I'm going to find them one way or another. I'm finding those, those bulls. Right. And we had that, you know, a little stint where it was super quiet and uh man we sat up on a ridge and glassed and boom there's bulls boom there's there's a, a small herd there oh my god look yeah. at that freaking monster right and it's like look they're not going to always talk and this rut fest anomaly thing where you think that that is the entire month of september and you know a, a, a cow is is you know blowing scent every hour of september i mean it's mm-hmm. it's like what what have you been paying attention to there's not you talk to anyone, right? Paul Medell, Dirk Durham, Jason Phelps, Mark Carlton, Joe Gillia. These are these are the experts in in the Elk Woods, right? 
what do they say that they're in a rut fest every day of September? No, they're to every one of them is saying, huh. Hey, sometimes you got to work your ass off to go be successful in the elk woods. And this shit ain't easy. So if you're looking for easy, you might as well go shoot the, the steel target with the BB gun at your local range. It's not easy. And I think there's this misconception of what it actually is on top of that, the desire to show that success, Mm -hmm. right? Is the pressure of showing that success. I don't want to delve down the social media realm, right? But that's a whole other podcast, man. Yeah. We want, we want to say I did it because it's so hard. Right. Someone to go out and not understand that I did it for some people come once every five years. You know what I mean? In, in that realm, you're doing one of the hardest things you could do Mm -hmm. on the mountain in the month of September, you know, and add the ebb and flow of herb size, how the land has been managed. Do we have any grazing animals out there? You know, that, that ranchers are in the high country with, how is that affecting it? What are the recreators doing right up to season during season? You know what I mean? So there's oh, hell, you, you have this you have Labor Day weekend. Yeah, you have this Labor yeah. Day weekend. Everybody's in the woods with their ATVs and motorcycles right. and, uh, right. you know, everything else, you know, I, and and I'm not going to sit here and say that sometimes that doesn't piss me off. Yeah, it's annoying. Like, go home. You guys, if you're not hunting, go home. <laughs> Even though I have no right to say <laughs> that. Right. But that's what right. I'm thinking. Right. And I'm, I'm honest about right. it. Like, go home. You're not, if you're not hunting, go home. It's, but that's not fair. It's, it's Labor Day weekend. It's their last, you know, what last two raw. These recreational campers, that's their last two raw. That's the last time they usually pull their, their rigs out and, and get out there and do that. And so, um, no, it's, uh, there's so much, there's so much. And, and this is all the stuff like this year. I want to, I want to talk about a lot of this stuff, uh, as, as we come into this new year and try to solve some of these etiquette issues, because like you said in the beginning guy, um, and we, we really didn't touch on etiquette, um, etiquette for, for anybody that is confused, etiquette is the manners you have, uh, towards other hunters in the field. That that's, that's the simplest form I can put it to you. Uh, if, if you see a truck at a very limited trailhead for, to use this trailhead example that, that I'm confused about, um, <laughs> the, the proper etiquette would be not to park at that trailhead and go in there. Now, if it's a trailhead that probably opens up to, you know, thousands of acres and and multiple drainages, whatever, that's a tough one. Again, I don't hunt trailheads, so uh, I I don't really know how to speak to that. Yeah, I don't Uh, get that one. I I don't, I, man, uh, where I'm pulled off hunting, it does, it looks like I just like maybe my axle broke on my truck and I, I just had to pull off to get off the road. You know, it, it should not be parked there kind of thing. That's what people should be looking for. And, um, but to talk about that etiquette thing and the manners that people have towards other hunters and, and, you know, the frustrations that come out of the lack of etiquette, it goes back. It's not a new thing, man. I was, I was getting annoyed and people were getting annoyed with me long before like social media existed, uh, you, you know, and, and it all boils down to this etiquette topic. So I'd love to have you guys on in the future to talk about that. Let's do it. Yeah, I think so- you should have Jeff on and do an episode with Jeff, just Jeff. And if you start yeah. talking about the family history, in in that realm, I mean, whoo, hell of Heck a yeah, guess. man, I'd do it. So yeah, you need but to get just, Jeffrey on. Just basic etiquette, though. Like if you're in the woods and you're at a trailhead that you can't get away from, have conversations with the people that that are there with you. Yeah. As you guys are hiking in, you're gonna see everybody packing up. Like I've I've been at that particular trailhead, and you see everybody racing each other mm-hmm. like, instead of having oh, the yeah. conversation. Get all their stuff on. Just oh, I have. I to. go up to them. And I say, I'm hunt- I plan on hunting here. Where do you plan on hunting? Okay, you're going there. I will leave that area and I'll go over here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, you're you're there, there, and there. I'm gonna go over here. Like it's just yeah. it's co- common, common sense. It's, it's easy and it's, it's so easy to courtesy. do. Yep. Well, it's yep. so easy to do it too, right? Yep. Regardless of the the landscape I'm on. Now, okay, so I roll up to a trailhead and I, you know, and, and the guys are there. Hey, where are you going? I'll if if I'm desperate for that area because I have some intel or I was on an animal the day before. Hey, man, would you guys mind if I went in there? I've been in this area for two or three days, and you know, really working it hard. I think folks are are gonna 
acquiesce and say, Hey man, yeah, you know, thanks for, thanks for talking to us instead of just jumping it. But, and those guys may follow you in, you know what I mean? And I, I've been known to play off of guys. If I see a guy over here, I'm watching what they're doing. I'm not going to go step on their feet, but if I see them making bad decisions, I'm going to go play those animals based on their bad decisions. Yeah. Is yeah. it stepping yeah. on their feet or, you know, what I mean? it's it. So, you know, I, I think when we look at each other in the face as hunters, we need to care about the next man's success as much as we care about our own success in the woods. And, and I think if we did that every time we went in the woods, our demographic would be a thousand times stronger and we'd all be better for it. Yeah. Now people may say I'm freaking crazy. I've done it time and time again. Yep. Hey, yep. Jim, not to get on a soapbox, but no, the you're social, good, me- social media aspect, like we're having all these guys tell everybody you have to go to the back country. You have to be five miles back. You have to do this and that you have to do this. If you do this, you do this, you do this, you'll kill an elk, right? So that was also part of why we started the Western Hunt Fest, because most guys can't do that, especially new hunters. Yeah. You're not going to go seven miles back and and kill an elk and effectively pull it out without the meat spoiling, especially where Mm -hmm. we hunt. It's lower elevation. So like part of what drove us to uh, the starting the Western Hunt Fest was to really focus in on like having guys try it out for themselves to like. Like, hey, come try the pack out challenge. Let's see if you're really fit to pull out an elk by yourself. If not, you have a buddy. Hunt with a buddy. If you can't hike back five miles and pull a bull out five miles, maybe you should be a road hunter like me. I hunt off the roads like you. Well, yeah, I go, I, I, dude. If I I would be screwed if I hunt if I killed a bull yeah. solo five miles back, I'd be calling buddies, man, and I'd just be. Yep. You know, oh, it ain't happening. That's what kept me from killing my bull this year. I was back there, and I'm like, man, what am I doing? I, I wanted to get an animal. I've so done I that, there, right? And I'm I sitting. On, I... I'm sitting on this down log, and I'm going, I can't do this. This is yeah. ridiculous. What did? I, why the hell? So I pull out the phone, you know, make sure that the Garmin's hooked up. I'm texting folks to see if I can get help, and I couldn't shoot the bull because I couldn't muster up any help. <laughs> yeah. No, I <laughs> I, I remember I. I had this bull come out at one point, this was years ago and, and I'm drawn back, but I was in the sunlight, you know, and he, and he comes out and he spots me right off the bat and turns around and boogies. And then I, like when he left, I, I, there was relief in my heart. I was like, man, I am glad he did not just eat an arrow because I, where I'm at, it would have been a disaster. Right. So I've made the mistake twice. I've made it twice where I killed bulls way too far in. But luckily I had people that were ready to go, you know? Yeah. But I've made that yeah. mistake twice. And that was, that's always in the back of my mind when I watch these shows and, and I will hear people say, you have to be this far back in order to get away from people. You have to be here. You have to be there. And that's not the case. Mm-mm. In fact, if you avoid the trailhead and you go off the side of the road, like you and I do, or like guy does, you're going to find the elk closer to the, closer to the roads. You're going to, if you look up that steep mountain and you say, I, I do not want to go up that the elk will go probably be there. That's where they're at. <laughs> go up it. That, that is yeah, where they're buddy. at, man. The, one of the best call-ins I had in 2023 was I had parked my truck with my daughters and we'd walked a hundred yards down the dirt road to get to this trail that was on the left. And I got distracted because there was this black bear coming up on the right. And I'm like, man, I'm going to put an arrow in that bear. If he, if he comes, you know, a little to the left, but well, he obviously banked right. And I, I didn't stick an arrow. He's too far away. So anyway, right then and there, hundred yards, less than a, probably less than a hundred yards from my truck. And I'm still on the dirt road. Just saw a black bear. Now, granted, this is not a busy dirt road. This is one of those roads that I found that took me years to find that is very remote. I access it from a different state but I'm hunting in the state that I'm supposed to be right. And, uh, this is what we're talking about hunting borders. Um, and I, I let, I, I ripped out a bugle right there on the road and me and my girls got about knocked over by this bugle response. This bull was just off the road down in some brush. Uh, unfortunately, um, it was, it was still early enough. Those thermals were going down and we got busted. 
Uh, but the the point is, is I, I people just we somehow these conversations, more conversations like this need to be had had to to maybe shine more of a reality as to what hunting is. And I don't I don't care if it's bear hunting or elk hunting or deer hunting or or whatever. You, you, you know the these species there there is a reality that is missing in terms of the perception that people have. Uh, what it takes, what it doesn't take, what what is realistic, what's not realistic, what is fucking rude behavior towards your fellow hunter, and what's not, what is respectable, what is ethical, what is yep. etiquette. I don't know these conversations. I I, I just I, I I feel strongly that uh, we are. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, "As a nation of free men, we must live through all time or die by suicide." What he meant was. The country cannot be overtaken by somebody else, but we could surely gut ourselves, right? And he was right Absolutely. because that's what led to the Civil War. Man, that's what hunters are doing. That's the situation we're in. And right. and so it just needs to be recognized. And so, um, yeah, anyway, I've kept you guys like way longer than I probably said I would. I don't, I don't even know if I told you. Now, I never tell Guy a time limit. He'll go all night long, man. Oh, I'll go all night. I don't oh, care. Yeah. We just yeah. jump off. I'm jumping on another one, so we're good. All right. Well, <laughs> hey, the reason Efren jumped off because uh, his hunting etiquette, if you take him with you, you better take his phone from him because he'll be dropping your Onyx pins. <laughs> <laughs> Just stand behind you like this. Like, <laughs> <"Hold on." laughs> no, I know. I, I got a guy I hunt with like that. And, and if he's listening to this, he'll know exactly who he is. Every time I take him, he's on his Onyx marking that spot. And I'm like, you dirty son of a bitch. <laughs> but. Uh, Yep. No, that's great, man. Um, Efren Gonzalez, we miss you, man. Uh, just uh, for everybody listening, that's that's who we had on the show. Uh, oh, anything you guys want to add real quick about the Western Hunt Fest before we wrap this up? Yeah, just, you know, come out to the event. You know, if you want to come and spectate and, and just get your feet wet and see what we're about, you're welcome to come out. It's free of charge. Um, if you want to come and just shoot, come out and shoot, bring the family. If you want to, you know, compete um come compete right that's what we're about we're about pushing limits and testing your abilities and your equipment um and if you want to just you know come shoot and you know i wanted to clarify earlier jimbo is you know you can come out and not do the pack out challenge and you can still qualify for the championship if you shoot you know two or three events and your lights out and you're shooting and that's what you got that's what you got right is it going to hold up at the championship probably not um, but yeah, don't be shy away from the competition aspect of it. Again, like Jeff said, it's a family event. Um, we want everybody to come get some education, some camaraderie, have a good time, enjoy the event and, uh, you know, talk to our sponsors, our vendors, attend seminars and, you know, get that little bit of education, um, you know, from, from some of our speakers. So we appreciate you having us on and I'll let Jeff drop the WWWs and IGs and all that. Yeah. yeah, go for it. I Jeff. wanted to add one more. Th yeah, I wanted to add one more thing too. Like, um, everybody has that friend that wants to get into hunting, that wants to learn, that wants to uh, surround themselves in it. This is a great place for you to bring that friend. Um, like Guy said, it's free to free of charge for spectators. So if you have that family member or friend that uh, wants to get into hunting, bring them by. They could uh, hang out with us. We can. They can listen to the seminars. They can hang out with people who are actually doing it and they could get like lifelong information with the friends that they meet and the, the people that they're interacting with there. Um, and then, yeah, if you uh, want to register for the Western Hunt Fest, it's www.westernhuntfest.com. Uh, we have a big presence on IG. Um, we do a little bit on Facebook, but, but if you're uh, wanting to sign up or if you're just interested, just go to our website. Um, it's either me or Guy if you message us on Instagram. So we'll respond to you quickly. We'll get with you. We are still looking for volunteers at each event. Um, we'll get you a shooter pass in exchange for your time and your effort. And yeah. The Instagram. Well, we, you know, and, and is Western it, Hunt Fest. It is Just, Western. Yeah. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then we, the one thing we didn't talk on and i don't want to extend this any longer because we were saying goodbyes um is the prize package for the championship at bailey right off oh yeah we, that's a, that's kind of an, yeah. an important aspect of this <laughs> yeah off the richters and i mean the our trophies guy yeah our trophies are second to none um 
Jeff puts a immense amount of time into designing these trophies and making sure it's something that you can put on the mantelpiece and be proud of. Um, but yeah, the prize package for the championship is, is unreal. We'll have raffles. We'll have giveaways. We're actually going to do uh, a pretty substantial giveaway coming up here in February. And then we're going to start this. We're calling it the ruck out challenge. Um, that'll kick off probably in the next week. And it's going to be kind of in preparation that, for Western hunt fest and getting people off the couch, getting that pack on going out and ruck. And um, so we're going to have a, a prize package put together for that as well. I love it. I lo- look look check that. out Jeff. Jeff's got the, if you guys are watching on YouTube or something, uh, here's, here's the trophy. Oh. Or is that the trophy Jeff? Or what is that? It's one of the trophies. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Now, now that you're talking, it's coming up clear. Hold it right in front of you because you got your you you have your background blurred. Oh, there you so, go. There, there you go. go. There you go. Sweet. Yeah, that's that's way cool, man. Uh, I I love this kind of stuff. Uh, eventually, I I'm hoping we can work something out where we get this sucker up here in North Idaho or Western Montana. Um, we'll be there. You know that that way you guys can actually get some real competitors of men that grow up in the real mountains, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Says the Utahian. <laughs> Not the hippie. Shut up, <laughs> shut up, guy. <laughs> now no, we appreciate we appreciate you giving awesome. us the time, man, and and letting us on the platform. Um, you know, I appreciate the heck out of you. So, thank you for uh, having us on. Thank you for what you do for our demographic, man, and and having some of these you know long form hard conversations. Yeah, man. No, I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, guy, it's always a pleasure. Jeff, uh, great to meet you for the first time. Efren, uh, if you're listening to this now, I know you had to jump off, man, but great to meet you as well. You guys are more than welcome on the show anytime. Um, really appreciate it. I really like this Western Hunt Fest con- concept. Uh, and in the show notes, guys, for you, all the, those of you listening, we're going to have the Instagram handle. Uh, we're going to have the, uh, the, the website for the Western hunt fest, and we're also going to have the outdoor or I'm sorry, pack uh, which is an apparel company right here that Jeff and, uh, uh, Efrel are, are, are involved in, and you guys can jump on there. They've got some really cool apparel. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? You said Efrel Yeah. That and he, pack me out. Yeah, but Effler, that's his new name. <laughs> Effler. <laughs> I love it. Efron. I would change Efron. it in my phone right now. Efron. <laughs> I, I said his name wrong, dude. Come on. Don't don't tell him. <laughs> no. hey, I'm gonna and I'm gonna call it pack me out. My uncle <laughs> my uncle say that we're uh pack him in. Did I say happy? <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I told you guys I was I, I'm freaking rusty. I have I don't think I've recorded since December 15th. <laughs> hey, you got you got one up on me, brother, because after September, man, I was like, you know what? I know you <laughs> you've been slacking, brother. I know. I got a couple on the deck and then I got a couple more coming up, so we're good. <laughs> Thanks guys for coming on. I really enjoyed that. Thank you, Let's brother. Just Appreciate keep in touch you. and we'll we'll talk soon. Yes, sir. Thank you much. You made it. That's the end of the episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure you're following us on Instagram at the Western Huntsman and write us a good review at Apple Podcasts. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Stay Western, and I'll see you on the